I really work at the intersection of the anthropology of media and the anthropology of identity, specifically race and religion. And part of what my research tries to do anthropologically is to understand what sparks fly when we think about the relationship between our media landscape, which is always changing, obviously, and our sense of sociality, our sense of community, connection, identity. So for me, it really is about thinking through how media becomes a lens for understanding who we are as a species and how that definition of us continues to change, get transformed, and evolve over time. How would we maybe compare and contrast the ways that Adorno tries to make his case in the Stars piece and the ways, the approach, the method of Walter Ben Michaels in Race into Culture. I went to Howard University in DC and as an undergraduate, I was ready to study film. I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker. I think some of it's just coming out of Brooklyn, New York in the 1980s when Spike Lee was ascendant. That's clearly part of it. And so there was something about what the Howard experience meant for me that really was a combination of feeling like they gave me the tools to technically make a film, um, to know how to structure the story. But what I thought anthropology and the academy in general could give me that I didn't have at that point was knowledge of the world beyond the relatively small part of the universe that I knew as Brooklyn, New York, that can inform my storytelling. And so that's kind of really naively how I got to the academy. I said, well, anthropology will give me an excuse to go out and get stories all over the world. That was it. One of the things I'm excited about is multimodal scholarship, which is really just a kind of highfalutin way to say, what does it look like to completely reimagine what forms knowledge can take in the 21st century? It really begs the question of what difference it makes, period, if we theorize, if we think in images and sound, not just in words. Like that to me is a profound and provocative question. And so multimodal scholarship is about trying to forge an answer using different platforms, different registers, different genres, to really get at a version, a 21st century version of what the academy can be. Because now the literature isn't just in books, the literature can exist in a whole bunch of different formats. And to me, that's such progress and can open up all kinds of vistas and venues we're probably not even ready for yet. Before I started as dean, before I even accepted um, the job as dean, I actually tried to speak to as many of the current and, uh, deans at Penn um, as I could find. And they all said it was a tough job, it demanded a lot, um, but it was incredibly fulfilling. And I found that to be the case. And I think part of what makes being a dean so energizing is you make this switch from being a scholar who's really always thinking about, first and foremost, one's own questions, right? What's driving you? What do you want to know? To being someone who says, my role is to facilitate a space so that other people can ask their questions and have what they need to answer them. And that, to me, has been pretty exciting because you feel like if you do your job well, there's this proliferation of interesting scholarship, knowledge that's transforming all these important debates going on in the world. And that's been really cool. And I don't think I, I realized how quickly one could make that move from being sort of really interested in your own questions to being interested in making sure other people have what they need to ask and answer theirs. One of the things we want to make sure we continue to do is not just know where we've been, what was, um, or even what is right now, to get that right. That's important. But anticipating what's to come, that's where we shine.